Greetings in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. My name is Matthew Jacob and I come from the city of Bangalore, India. The Lord led me to start Gift of God Ministries that was born with a vision to see churches planted, to see revival in the land. And God put this vision in my heart uh, after resigning from a good ministry where I was based in South India. The Lord led me to start Gift of God Ministries, born out of vision and a passion to see souls saved in the unreached parts, especially in the rural parts of our country. The Lord helped me in an amazing way in this journey. And I must say, God has been good to me. God has been gracious to me. He saved me at the age of 18 when I was born again. Being raised up in a traditional Catholic family, the Lord led me to know the Lord Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I was born again on my knees as I call upon the name of the Lord and I gave my heart to Jesus. It was a message from Luke 15 about the story of the prodigal son. Hallelujah. Thank God. Hallelujah. The Matthew Jacob of the old is gone. The Bible says uh, that if anyone is in Christ, uh, he's a new creature. The old has gone and the new has come. Something dramatic happened in my life when I had an encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And ever since then, that day, I want to say, my, my, my beloved friends, uh, those of you who are watching me, I want to say, when Jesus came into my heart, peace came in. I was without peace. I was without hope. But when the Lord Jesus came into my life, uh, I found such a peace. I came to know that Jesus was real. And all I wanted to do was to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. I got born again. On, in the month of February, the last week of February 1978, I was born again. I was washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And ever since that day, I want to say honestly, when the Lord Jesus Christ came into my life, I just wanted to know about the Lord. And as a growing up in a very traditional family, I did not know the Bible till I suddenly picked up a little dusty Gideon's New Testament, corner of my house and my cupboard. I pulled it out and I began to read the, the Bible. And I said to myself, if this is the word of God, I better follow the word of God. The journey of obeying the word of God. The journey of following the word of God has taken me from nation after nation today. I thank God, hallelujah, if I had compromised with the word of God, if I had made a compromise in my life, today I would not have been standing where I am today. Today I travel the nations, I travel thousands and thousands of miles, uh, sharing the love of God, preaching the good news of the gospel, and it is my joy and privilege to say that Jesus made all the difference in my life. Born and raised in my background, my my pursuit was uh, from a young age to become a priest because when they asked me the question, what do you want to be? I said, I want to be a priest. But I didn't realize that there was a call of God in my life till I came to the ghettos of Mumbai. Kneeling down in the ghettos of Mumbai, the largest slums, the largest ghettos in the whole of Asia, I knelt down and I rededicated my life to serving the Lord Jesus Christ full time. And ever since that day, my God, I thank the Lord Jesus Christ for the call of God in my life. I found Jesus in downtown Bangalore. I found Jesus, hallelujah, in a little church, hallelujah. Hallelujah. But praise God, hallelujah, because I could not compromise with the word of God, because the word of God is true. And because the Bible says, uh, be not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship is light with darkness? What fellowship is uh, what, what fellowship has Christ got to do with Belial? For you are the temple of the living God. It says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 14 to 18. And it ends by concluding, Therefore come out from among them, and touch not the unclean thing. And then I will be a father unto you. Then you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord God Almighty. That scripture actually brought a revolution in my life. Because light and darkness have nothing in common. Beloved of God, when you are walking in the light, you will have fellowship with the Father. And ever since I came to know Jesus, I began to fall in love with Jesus. I began to know about His love. I began to understand the great love of God. And today I'm going to share with you some of the deep things that I've learned over the years. In my last uh, 40 years, I've been preaching the gospel. In my last 35 years in full-time ministry, the Lord has taken me a long way. In the book of Matthew, chapter 9 and verses 9, there is a scripture. It says, God saw a man sitting by the customs. His name was Matthew. And the Bible says, when Jesus said to Matthew, follow me, he left everything and followed him. 
July 14, 1984, I left my family business. I was involved in a family business. I left my family business overnight. I left everything with $2 in my pocket or let me say probably about 150 rupees. That is what all I had. But I want to tell you, hallelujah, the last 35 years, uh, the Lord God Almighty has fed me. He has provided for me. He has granted me the grace to share this uncompromising gospel, taking me to nations, traveling and preaching this good news of the gospel. Because Jesus said a great commission that he gave was going into all the world and preach the good news. And the Bible says in Mark 16, 16, He that believes and is baptized shall be saved, and he that believeth not shall be damned. The word of God also says these signs shall follow the believers. You shall lay hands on the sick and the sick shall recover. And the word of God says, hallelujah, that to preach this gospel, to make disciples of all nations. And so this is my duty, to train and to make disciples of all nations. I'm involved in a ministry called Gift of God Ministries born in the year 2001 and I want to say for the last 19 years the Lord has been leading me in an amazing way. It's been a faith ministry. I left my home as I said with two dollars and I'm still alive to tell you the story that I faced death many times. Many times I could have died but God in his goodness, in his mercy, he kept me alive. The Bible says in Psalm 34, not a bone of yours shall be broken. Hallelujah. It says the righteous will, will never go hungry or a seed begging bread. It is my testimony to say that God fed me. God provided for me. God showed me grace and favor wherever I went. And I believe, hallelujah, every milestone God has been with me. I remember on my 50th birthday about 10 years ago, in the morning I was in Dubai. At 3 o'clock on the same same day I was in Jordan and in the evening at 7 p.m. on my 50th birthday I was in a Pentecostal church in Egypt preaching the word of God. How did God had me travel on my 50th birthday in three different nations? But I want to tell you hallelujah God has been amazing favor of God has been on my life. The amazing grace of God I've been able to experience. And those of you who are watching, I want to pray for you. I want to ask God to touch you right now. I'm going to pray, hallelujah, as I come to a conclusion, that whatever your need may be, if you do not know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, it's an opportunity for you to give your heart to the Lord Jesus Christ. I found the Lord at the age of 18. I'm excited to share about this good news that Jesus Christ is the Savior of the world. The Bible says He's the Savior of the world. He is the healer, the divine healer. I've experienced healing in my life many times. I pray for thousands of people around the world and most people, hallelujah, get healed instantly because you know what? Jesus is still the healer. He is the same yesterday. He is the same today and he's the same forever. Jesus Christ still heals the sick and he gave that great commission to go and heal the sick. One third of Jesus' ministry was to heal the sick. The, the ministry of healing is one of the gifts that God has been amazingly using me. So I want to pray for those that need a prayer of healing. Even as those who are watching this program, I want to tell you that even... Even if you're in a situation where doctors have given up on you, I want to tell you the doctor of all doctors will come into your life and will heal your sick body and will make you whole. I want to go into a little bit more of my, a few more minutes of my testimony. I was a florist in downtown Bangalore selling flowers. Today I sell flowers no more. Today I sell roses no more. Today I sell bouquets no more. But I share the rose of Sharon and the lily of the valley. He has made the difference in my life. Jesus Christ is the lily of the valley. He is the rose of Sharon. He picked me up from the muck. He picked me up uh, from my situation where as a flower boy I was selling flowers uh, and he made me a uh, uh, ambassador for Jesus Christ to take this great good news. The Bible says to to spread the fragrance of the gospel of Jesus Christ to the ends of the earth. This gospel is the good news, beloved. And I want to tell you it saves people. I want to tell you it is, it is the only... A way that you can be saved. The Apostle Paul said in Romans 1.16 that I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ for it is the power of God and the salvation. There is a dynamis power in the power of believing the gospel. Jesus said, hallelujah, if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and you shall believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Glory be to God. The florist overnight became an evangelist 
and then God has traveled, God has uh, uh, had given me a traveling ministry to travel from village to town to cities all across the northern belt of India. I traveled and there were days, hallelujah, when I walked and walked for miles. But I want to tell you, villages that never heard the gospel of Jesus Christ were able to hear at least once the gospel of Jesus Christ. I thank God for the years that I have traveled in northern India. And I thank God, hallelujah, for the way God led me and guided me. I went, I went to many other uh, neighboring countries like Nepal and Bhutan and shared the gospel. But I never ever thought, hallelujah, in my wildest dreams, that the Lord would take me to the nations. And ever since 2001, the Lord had me open doors even to travel to the nations. How do I do it? By faith. Because the Bible says, hallelujah, if you have a living faith, you can do all things. And I want to encourage you, friends, if you have a faith to believe God's word, all things are possible. Jesus said, have a faith of a mustard seed. Praise God. Do you have a faith of a mustard seed? You know what can come out of a mustard seed? A huge plant. Hallelujah. There will be a lot of regret regret in heaven for people who do not understand that faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So take time to read the word of God. Take time to meditate on the word of God. I used to be a florist. I became an evangelist. I was a Christian journalist for more than 10 years. Did four Christian magazines in English and I had a I had also a passion in my heart that one day God would use me, hallelujah, to the ends of the earth. It is my burning desire to see a revival in the land. And so today my message is on this one verse that I want to talk about, revival and prayer. Do you want to see revival in your land? Do you want to see a revival in your country? Do you want to see a revival in your nation? Wherever God has placed you, God wants you to be a revivalist. God wants you to bring a revival fire. And the Bible says, Hallelujah. It only takes a spark to get the fire glowing. There is a verse that I want to read for you this, this, this in my message. It is from the gospel according to St. Matthew chapter 3. One of my favorite scriptures. And this is what it says in Ma Matthew chapter 3 and verses 11 and 12. I indeed baptize you with water unto repentance. But he that comes after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I am not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. The word of God says that John the Baptist preached a message of repentance. Today the word repentance is hardly spoken in the churches. But I want to say that there will be no revival without repentance. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves. How will you see a revival in the land if there is no turning away from sin? Turning away from wickedness? Turning away from the things that the enemy had a hold over your life? And John the Baptist was the forerunner of Jesus. He said, I baptize you with water unto repentance. But there comes one after me who is mightier than I whose shoes I am not worthy to bear he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire I was walking one one day in in one of the capital cities and I was still I was telling the Lord Lord is there anybody is there anybody I need to pray for as a person passed by me I looked up at the person and I asked the person I saw the person was a hungry person for the Lord the person was born again but had not been baptized with the Holy Spirit and as I looked at her I said can I pray for you that you would be filled with the Holy Spirit uh, even before I laid my hands on her the power of God came upon her and she began to speak uh, in a heavenly language and the Bible says uh, that she was filled with the Holy Spirit uh, and she began to utter with a heavenly language that's exactly what it says in Acts chapter Two. It says that they were in one accord, in one place, and suddenly they were shaken. There was a rushing mighty wind, and the power of the Holy Spirit came. When 120 disciples were gathering in the upper room, there was a visitation of heaven. There was a Holy Spirit and fire that came down, and cloven tongues of fire came upon them. But what is the secret, beloved? It is for the church, the body of Christ, to be one. It is for the body of Christ to be united. It is for the body of 
of Christ to come in unity. Today we have so much of people who are trying to build their kingdoms. Are we trying to build the kingdom of God? I want to ask you a question. Are you willing to pray for your land? Are you willing to pray for a healing in your land? There is a desperation in my heart. I want to see a spark of revival. I want to see a revival fire that will spread through your country, your nation, wherever God has called you. Whether it's Asia, whether it's Africa, whether it's South America, whether it's in North America, whichever part of the world you are, whether you're Europe, it only takes two things to bring a revival. One is that you should be willing to pay the price of being a true disciple of Jesus Christ. Are you willing to pray? Hallelujah. The Lord led me in his amazing grace over these last 35 years. I have understood the secret. Hallelujah. That we need to be baptized with the Holy Spirit and with fire. There needs to be a fire in your life. There needs to be a fire that will burn out the dross in your life. And as I'm speaking this message, I can sense some of you are hungry for the Lord. God wants to baptize you again with the Holy Spirit. Uh, Don't talk about the experience that you had uh, maybe 10 or 20 or 30 years ago when you got born again. What is your experience with Jesus today? I want to say that there is a fire that will burn out the dross in your life. It will cleanse you. The Word of God will cleanse you even as you're receiving the Word. The Word will activate your spirit, man. And you will have faith to rise up out of your wheelchair. You will have faith to walk. You will have faith to see an answer to prayer. Pray Prayer is the key to revival. I want to emphasize prayer is the key to revival. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray. Beloved of God, I want to see a revival. Jesus is coming soon. But it is time for the church to begin to pray. It is not email but it's knee mail beloved. When we begin to pray like we have never prayed with the desperation. God will visit you. The word of God says in verse 12. Whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge his flow and gather his wheat into a garner and he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. Glory be to God. The baptize of the Holy Ghost. Jesus is the one who baptizes you with the Holy Spirit. But he also baptizes you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Today I see churches that at one time were called and labeled as spirit filled. It's not the title. Hallelujah. That's important. I want to know whether you carry the fire of God inside of you. I want to know whether you have the power of God inside of you. Do you have the dynamis of God inside of you? Do you have the dynamite of God inside of you? you. God wants to stir you to the next level. I pray my beloved brother and sister, don't be satisfied. Jesus is coming back for a church that is holy, for a church that is spotless, for a church that is blameless. The Bible says in Ephesians 5 that he is coming for a church that is without spot or wrinkle. Hallelujah. I pray that you will be a part of the body of Christ. You will be a part of the bride of Christ. You will be a part of the of the end time. Hallelujah kingdom work that we will be able to build God's kingdom. I want to turn quickly to a verse of scripture that says in Isaiah chapter 56. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. The word of God says here in Isaiah 56 and verses 7. Even them will I bring to my holy mountain and make them joyful in my house of prayer. Their burnt offering and their sacrifice shall be accepted upon mine altar for mine house shall be called an house of prayer for all nations. God wants to build a house of prayer. He wants you to offer the burnt offering. He wants you to offer a sacrifice of praise, a burnt offering and their sacrifice shall be accepted upon mine altar. And the Bible says in, 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 in the word of God in Romans 12, 1 and 2, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable sacri- uh, service. Don't be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that you may do that which is good and that which is perfect and that which is the acceptable will of God. What is the will of God for your life today? The will of God for your life today is just as I said, to offer yourself unto Him as a living sacrifice. What kind of a sacrifice does God demand of you? He demands everything of your life. John Hyde was a missionary from America. 
He came to Punjab and he always prayed and prayed and prayed. And he had a premature grave. He had a cry in his heart and he said, give me India or I die. His cry was for India. He was an American missionary who got filled with the Holy Spirit on the ship to India. When he set sail and I always think of the prayer that this man had. He cried and he said, Lord, give me India or I die. That was the desperation of the desire that he wanted to see to be India saved. I ask of you, my beloved friends, if you can build an altar in your own home, if you can gather your family, gather the assembly, gather the people that you know and build a holy altar unto God. It is an offering of yourself as a sacrifice. The Bible talks about the morning offering and the evening sacrifice. Beloved of God, do not neglect family times of prayer. Prayer is the key to revival. Prayer is the key to breakthrough. Prayer is the key to seeing the mountains move in my heart and in my desperation. God gave me a vision in the in just outside the city where I live in a small town. God has given me a vision and the building of setting up a prayer for all nations is the vision and the focus that God put in my heart. I want to see a revival. It's not the big churches that are going to experience a revival. I believe it's a little groups of people that come together. The little assembling together of the saints. The little assembling together of the body of Christ. And when they come in unity, when they come in love, they're going to see a visitation of heaven. Revival will break forth. I'm believing God for a revival in your life today. I'm believing that God will make you a revivalist. Hallelujah for the kingdom. I believe the time is short. I believe Jesus is coming soon. I believe the bride is adorning itself and getting itself ready. I have an urgent message for you. Whichever nation you are, you may be living in America. You may be living in Africa. You may be living in Asia. You may be living living in, in India, but wherever you are, I want to ask you, are you burdened for your land? Are you burdened for your nation? John Hyde prayed, Lord, give me India or I die. He was an American missionary, but when he came and laid down his life in India, it was because he wanted to see a revival. Go to the state of Punjab. God is doing amazing things today. Why? Because somebody prayed, somebody fasted, somebody paid the price. It is my desire, beloved. I want to see the greatest revival in our time. The Bible says that as the waters cover the sea, the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth. Hallelujah. The Bible says the Holy Spirit is referred to the cloud. The Holy Spirit is referred to water. The Holy Spirit is referred to the living waters. The Holy Spirit is referred to fire. The Holy Spirit is referred to a dove. The Holy Spirit is referred, hallelujah, throughout the Bible through different connotations. But I want to tell you in these last days, the Holy Spirit is inside of you. The kingdom of God is within you. Jesus said the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it is righteousness. It is peace. Peace and it's joy in the Holy Spirit. Uh, I want to ask you if you want to partner with me, if you want to have a hallelujah desire to build the kingdom of God, I would like you to stay connected with me. I will be having my desire to connect with me with you on my email, hallelujah, through WhatsApp, and I will be having you an opportunity for you to partner with me. I am right now praying, almost in the finishing stage of building a house, a house of prayer for all people hallelujah glory be to God and it is my vision and my passion that before Jesus comes we will see training people in the end time of training people of evangelizing and mobilizing people in this end time if you like to partner with me if God has spoken to you in a few moments I'm going to pray for those that need to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior it is a simple message that I have for you but my message is with a desire that you will have a passion that will be birthed out of your life. May God help you. May God have you to open your heart and receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior by in simply inviting Jesus into your heart. Just as I received Jesus at the age of 18, I said, Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. Forgive me for my sins. Wash away my sins. Come into my heart. Make me a brand new person. And the Lord came into my life. If you need healing, I want to pray for you right now. May the Lord Jesus Christ send forth his word and heal you right now. I don't know what the doctors talk about you but my, my Bible says I shall not die but I shall live and declare the work of God it says in Psalm 118 
18, verse 17. I will not die. I nearly died myself in the year 1989, exactly 30 years ago. But I'm still alive after 30 years to tell you, God raised me from my deathbed. God raised me from a sickness. God raised me from a time and a moment when I thought myself, I'll slip into eternity. My God is a healer. My Jesus is a healer. I want you to partner with me. I want you to ask you that if you would like to partner with me, I want to give you an opportunity to sow a seed into my ministry, to plant a seed into my ministry. My ministry is called Gift of God Ministries. Uh, we are we are looking for partnership. We are looking for those who have a vision to sow into this ministry so that we can build the kingdom of God. We want to train evangelists. We want to train those who need to be training. So I'm setting up a house of prayer for all nations in outskirts of my city. And if you want to partner with me, you're welcome. The building is completed. I need some help. But if God speaks to you, you may write out a check in my name and I will have you pay through pay, PayPal or pay, pay it through the uh, details that you will see. God richly bless you. If you have been blessed by this message, do write to me, do email me, and I will be looking forward to hearing from you soon. May the Lord richly bless you. May the Lord add His blessings to you. The Bible says the blessings of the Lord, it addeth richer, and there is no sorrow to it. May your cup run over. The Bible says, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. It is my, it is my desire that you would be blessed. It is my desire desire that you will grow in the things of God. It is my desire that you will have a passion for revival and prayer. May the Lord richly bless you. Thank you for being a participant in the kingdom's work. God richly bless you. May the Lord Jesus Christ grace abound toward you. I once again thank God for this opportunity to meet you and greet you. And if you, if in any way you have a prayer need, do not Call on my number. It will be displayed on the screen. You're welcome to call on my number, even through WhatsApp, even through mail. And I will look forward to seeing you again. God richly bless you. Thank you.